Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome to the fifth and final Ludum Dare tip that I have for you guys. And this one's going to be about development. So while you're actually doing Ludum Dare, how you should essentially be developing your game. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, follow your plan. Okay, the very first tip I gave to you guys was, was planning. Okay, and that's, you can see the video there. Go ahead, check it out. It's Ludum Dare Tips Planning. That's the title of the video. Um, that video talks about how you should approach the theme that you receive when you when Ludum Dare starts and how you should essentially break down what kind of game you're gonna make and plan it, okay? That's very important, okay? Because when you're developing your game, you wanna be following that plan. Um, otherwise, if you have no plan, you're kind of screwed, okay? So try and stick to your plan, okay? Remember that new ideas means less time, okay? You will be running out of time if you continually have new ideas. I know it's tempting, but um, you have that planning period to think of pretty much everything and, and like it's fine to take like I'd say up to an hour or so just to plan exactly what you want to do okay in in the planning stage do, do a brainstorm whatever just plan what you want to do and then of course make sure that you stick to that plan during development because um because like it's you know while new ideas aren't necessarily a bad thing okay in fact they can many times save a game um just remember just be cautious with new ideas don't just decide to do whatever comes to your head just because um just because someone said so or did, well i guess just just because you decided that it's a good idea okay don't try and do that um what you want to do is just you know if you really think that that new idea is going to be very very beneficial to the game and in fact it'll be more beneficial than you finishing what you currently have even though you're running out of time then yeah try that new idea but otherwise just be, just be cautious with that sort of thing do not suddenly change the genre of your game okay if you're if you wake if you, if you go to bed at the end of the first day you wake up tomorrow there's like 26 hours left until the competition ends and you're like you know what this game's good but i mean a 2d kind of platformer yeah i think like a 3d first person shooter would be better for this genre no dude you got 26 hours left okay just make sure that you follow your plan and don't do drastic changes never do drastic changes like changing genre all right commit Right? You've chosen something, you've chosen a game to make, make that game. Commit to it, please. Okay, features. So what features you should add and stuff like that. So you've got to manage your time wisely with, with features. The features is kind of like the, um, I guess it's kind of like, what was the other one? Planning, okay? It's kind of like the plan, like with features, right? So um, you've got a plan and you want to implement these features, but you have to manage your time wisely, okay? If you need to imp implement something like AI, Give yourself a time limit for that, okay? Give yourself a, let's just say, AI AI has to be done in two hours, okay? And then stick to that because um, if you kind of just forget about time and you don't really follow your plan, of course, you're going to kind of run out of time eventually and that, that's going to be a problem. So remember, a new feature equal, equals more time. This is kind of like this is kind of like the previous one where you want to add, add more and more and get new ideas, okay? New features equals more time, okay? As in, it'll take more time, okay? Okay. Um, Whenever you decide that you want to add a new level or a new menu system or hang on, let's add a new gameplay mechanic, that's going to take you time to implement. And a good rule to follow here is that if you estimate a feature to take two hours to implement, it'll probably take four. So make sure you have that time, okay? If I realistically want to add a new gameplay mechanic and I'm going to be like, oh, I don't know, that'll probably take me about an hour and a half, make sure you have room for three hours because it'll probably end up taking that long, okay? Honestly, because... Especially in the late kind of game stuff, when you start making, when you start trying to add new features, and for some reason you, you're like, oh, I don't know, this game isn't satisfying to me. I want to add something new to it. Um, uh, other other features might break because of that, and because you're in such a kind of limited, I guess, time capacity, you might not realize at the time of writing those previous features or the engine that it wouldn't allow for this kind of thing, and thus it can break your game and. Anyway, just make sure that you have enough time if you really want to add new features. Um, don't break your game. <laughs> I guess that leads me to my next point. Do not break your game. Um, be careful with that because I know that you, you, you could spend three hours implementing a feature and then finally when you're just about to launch it, that's it. Like you realize, oh no, the way that I'm handling tiles, like it's never going to work with this pathfinding algorithm or something. Just be careful with that, okay? Because breaking your game is very, very real, very possible, and it will make you cry, and that's a bad thing. Okay, do not add additional features before your game is stable. When you plan out the original, like, I guess, 
uh, I guess, plan or the original, I guess, like timeline and feature list for your game, the original gameplay that you plan out for your game, implement that first. Don't suddenly add new features just because they came into your head. Make the game stable, make the game playable first. And then if you have loads of time, if you're literally done with your entry and you have 20 hours left, yeah, go ahead, add new features, please. It will hopefully make the game better because, well, I guess if you're adding new features and it's making it worse, it's a bad thing. But um, do not add new features before your game's done, okay? Seriously, do those features you originally planned um, and, uh, and then move on to new features if you have a lot of time left. Organize yourself. This is a big one. And I know a lot of you guys are probably going to be complaining because there's an S and not a Z in organized. That's how you spell it in Australia. So, yeah. All right. So, folder and hierarchy structure, bro. Seriously. Have your folders structured. Have all your files and your hierarchy. I mean, stuff like classes, packages in Java, folders in C++, whatever. Have that stuff very well structured. Okay? Keep yourself organized. Not only will it help you, it will also motivate you. Clean, have a clean desk even. That's actually important, right? When you're developing, you want to have a clean desk. You want to have, you don't want to have dirt everywhere. You don't want to have a cluttered desk. That sucks. I'm going to be honest right now. I am much, much, much more efficient in my development if I have a clean desk just because I feel cool. I feel good about myself. I feel good about what I'm developing. So that's really, 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 really important. File names and variable names, okay? Name it what you need to name it, okay? If you don't know a constructive name for it, or if the name is too long, say it's like 15 characters long, doesn't matter, name it that, okay? You wanna be able to understand your own code. I would not go as far as to say comment your code. I honestly almost never do this un unless I'm working in a team or I need to I don't know, submit the project to university or essentially other people are going to read it. If you're just developing it by yourself, comments you could help you at multiple times, but don't don't feel the need to like to Java doc your entire engine as you're developing it for Ludum Dare. I wouldn't say go as far as comments, but I definitely would say make sure your variable names are constructive. Don't name stuff A, B, whatever. This leads me on to my next point. Don't even think about obfuscating on the go. Why do people do this? I see, I see a lot of people in both university and in freaking, on the, especially on YouTube, naming their classes A, 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 B, A, C. Dude, why are you obfuscating on the go? Seriously, why are you do? Who does this? Honestly, can someone give me a good reason for this? Don't even think about telling me security is a good reason for that because that's why obfuscators exist after you, after you freaking zip your, your, your jar archive your your uh, your application. Why? Who obfuscates on the go? Don't even think about doing this, okay? It will slow you down so much, and it will in any kind of large scale project, you'll just screw yourself over. Do not obfuscate. And in fact, you have to release your source code anyway for Ludum Dare. Uh, if you're doing the compo, not the jam. I don't think you do have to for the jam, but for the compo, you need to release your source code anyway. And I don't think people are going to appreciate it if it's obfuscated. So do not even think about doing that, please. Set time goals and work to finish them, okay? What I mean by that is, let's just say it's 12 p.m. right now. Uh, I need to have this level, this level system, this entity, this entity and level system done by 3 p.m. Okay, do stuff like that, and then as you see, oh, it's past 3 p.m. I haven't even fr freaking started it yet, or I haven't finished it yet. You can see how you're going for time, okay? And you can actually, I, I, I guess you can have like a triage system, right? You can, you can order things from more important to less important in terms of, in terms of implementing those features and, and I guess development of them. Okay, so make sure that you do set time goals and you work to finish them because that's what Ludum Dare essentially will be. It'll be a structure of goals and time allocated to it. It's like a project. What I love about Ludum Dare is you're literally your own game studio and you have 48 hours to make a game from start, from inception to release, to marketing, to finish, which is which is really, really cool. Um, but you make sure you, you actually organize yourself and do that stuff. Food and sleep. People always forget about this, especially the food part. Dude, you're going to get hungry, and unless you have people who are kind enough to bring you food and, and stuff like that, or make you food or whatever, um, you're going to have to get that food yourself somehow. Now, cooking is fun. I love to cook for myself, but during Lot of Dare, that's probably not going to be an option because um, I can't waste an hour or so cooking. That's not good. <laughs> um so what I would recommend you do is you either make something the night before and put it in the fridge and heat it up or whatever the next day, or you order something like pizza or I don't know. Going out isn't great because it takes time unless you happen to live, you know, 10 meters away from a restaurant. 
Um, also, you have to obviously wait for them to prepare your food apart from the journey there and back. So I would honestly recommend that you um, that you have the food in your house somehow uh, or get it delivered like pizza. That way you can keep developing until you hear the door knock. So yes, or your phone ring. Okay, have fun, right? I've said all this stuff, but have fun. Stress isn't great, okay? You're not doing Ludum Dare to stress. You're doing Ludum Dare to make an awesome game and have a good time, okay? The point of Ludum Dare is to make an awesome game, chill out, have fun, and test yourself. That's what it's all about. Don't stress. No one's gonna, no one's gonna do anything if you don't make a game. You know what I mean? If, you, if your game's crap, no one's gonna say anything. Well, they probably will, but you don't have to submit it or whatever. Or, or even if you do, just go ahead. Like no one's gonna really judge you. There's no like winner for this competition. As in, there's no like, there's no like cash prize or anything. There's it's it's one of those just laid back, chilled composite competitions where the goal is just to basically get. 2,000 people to make a game. That's what it's all about, right? Ludum Dare should be about fun. In fact, it probably is. So if you're not having fun doing Ludum Dare, you need to either rethink game development as a hobby or as a career. Um, but more importantly, you need to get your priorities straight. Like, why are you doing Ludum Dare? Because if you're not having fun doing it, there's a problem somewhere, okay? Um, I understand that a lot of people might be stressed, but um, I mean... I, 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 I could see the perspective as, you know, when I'm live streaming, there's usually about 250 people watching me make a game. And obviously I have this channel here with like 21.8 thousand subscribers. So if I don't make a game in Ludum Dare, I could see the picture of, oh, Cherno can't even finish a game, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, like, I, I don't even feel stressed when, I, when I'm developing in front of 250 people. So if, if, you guys, if you guys are feeling stressed while you're doing Ludum Dare... Um, just relax, okay? It's about fun. That's what I really want to stress about it, huh? Stress. But anyway, I want to stress that it's about fun, okay? It's not about stress and it's not a university project, okay? No one's going to mark you for this. It should be about fun. So please, please have fun with it. You will learn. That's one of the great things about Ludum Dare. Whatever you make, you will learn something new, guaranteed. I do. Every time I do Ludum Dare, I benefit myself immensely, okay? That's part of the reason why I love doing it. I'm like, dude, I can't wait for this weekend. I want to learn so much about programming and game development. That's exactly what it should be like. You will make something. That is the other other awesome thing. You will have something that you can be like, hey, Mike, you're my best friend. Play this game I made. I made it fully and it's complete and you can play it. It's playable. You will make that and that's awesome, okay? That is so precious. That is your prize. For Ludum Dare. A lot of people ask me, is there any prize for Ludum Dare, blah, 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 is there, what does what the winner get, is there like a top 10 prize? Your prize is your creation, okay? That, and that is the best prize you could ever have, honestly, from a game development competition. The thing that you make, it forces you to make something, and you you make it, and you have it, it is yours, You you get a product. You will have fun, okay? It's making a game, making games is fun. It's fun. You will have fun during Love and Dare as long as you don't stress out. So just make sure you keep that in mind. Relax, okay? Just sit back, kick your chair back. Don't feel compelled to stream, okay? I, I'll go on to the next page and I'll talk a bit about that. But a lot of people, um, I, I know that a lot of people are streaming and streaming slows you down a lot. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think if I wasn't live streaming, I'd just kick back on my sofa with my laptop and I'd I'd make a game and I'd have a lot of fun. Not that I'm not having fun when I'm streaming. But the point is, just relax. This is about you, this competition. This isn't about people watching you. This is about you, okay? This is you making a game, okay? Just, that's what it's about. So relax, kick back on the sofa with a laptop, develop a game, and just have fun with it, man. This is this is what it's all about, okay? So, yeah. Anything else? Yeah, time lapse it. This is cool. Uh, there's a program called Chrono Lapse. Just go search search on Google for it. It's called Chrono Lapse. So Chrono Lapse. Um, one word. It's a time lapsing software, right? So what it, what it will do is you'll set a time interval. Let's just say uh, five seconds, and every five seconds it will take a take a screenshot of your monitor or your monitors if you've got more than one. Um, and uh, and essentially the the good part about that and it'll output it as like a PNG is that you can grab all those images and use them as frames, play it back at like 24, 30 frames per second, whatever, and you, what you will get is a very 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 fast version of those 48 hours that you spend or however many hours you spend developing the game, which is really really cool because you can see yourself making the game in about five minutes <laughs> or ten minutes. Okay, that entire game that you made from scratch in ten minutes, and that's really really cool. And then you can upload it to YouTube and. And link me to it because I want to watch it. 
Uh, that sounded like I said I won't watch it. I do want to watch it. That's what I meant. I want to watch it. So make sure you upload it on YouTube. Okay, yeah, stream it. Stream it, okay? Uh, if, if you happen to have a nice setup and you've got a pretty fast computer and you think it won't slow you down, go ahead and stream Let Them Dare, okay? It's fun. Um, you'll get people watching you, hopefully. And, um, and I, I, I guess the benefit of that will be that, um, well, you know, it's going to be fun to interact with people on that kind of level. And that's part of the reason I do it. Um, live streaming is a lot of fun as long as you don't stress out about it. Okay. If you're stressing out about it, oh, there's 20 people watching me. I, what if I screw up? Oh, I did such a rookie error there. Don't worry about that. Okay. If, if you are worried about that, don't stream it because you're just going to end up having a worse and much more pressured time. Um, release early versions. That's always fun. I like to pop up an, an early version, like an alpha or a beta of my game, maybe like five, 10 hours in and get people just to play it. And then they can like be like, oh, it's fun or it's shit or it's cool or it works at least. And that's always fun. And that, that's more for the community than for me. I'm not going to take tips from you guys being like, oh dude, like it, it'd be more fun if you added this, if you added this, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's, it's more about you guys getting to see the game as it evolves. And that's really fun for you guys. Post on to Lot and Dare slash compo. If you sign in and you have, I'm pretty sure you have to create an account there if you want to submit. Oh, well, yeah, you would. But um, make sure you uh, you post, just basically post like blog posts. That that homepage is made up of blog posts from, I guess, users. So um, go ahead and just sign. It's like a WordPress site. You just sign, you just create an account and uh, and you just post stuff. So basically you can be like, oh, here's, I'm two hours in. Here's my screenshot. That's what it looks like. And then you can get some feedback from that, hopefully, as well as uh, you, you kind of get to see a journal of your game at the end, which is uh, very, very cool. So make, make sure you interact with the community. That's part of the best part. And continue your awesome idea after Lot Dare finishes. So LD stands for Lot Dare, obviously. Uh, when Lot Dare is complete, okay, hopefully that theme and the, the, the amount of development you've done over the last 48 hours, that will trigger some kind of motivation for, oh, this is actually a really cool game. I'm going to keep making this after Lot of Dare. And then go ahead and keep making it, okay? That's what it's all about. So, um, and then maybe you can even release it on something like iPhone or whatever and, and, uh, and charge some money for it. And uh, there you go. You got, a bit of a, you got a bit of a commercial indie game that you've just released, which is awesome. So that's what Lot of Dare is, uh, is also all about. Okay, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed these five tip videos. Uh, the playlist to them will be down below in case you missed any of them. Um, and uh, twitter.com forward slash the channel is, of course, my Twitter uh, account. I almost said channel. <laughs> Twitter channel. Uh, twitter.com forward slash the channel is my Twitter. And uh, I'll be obviously posting about Lot of Dead there. So you can uh, follow me on that if you don't want to miss me streaming, which leads me onto twitch.tv forward slash the channel. That's where I'm going to be streaming the entire Lot of Dead uh, 28 competition. So go ahead and follow me there and follow me on Twitter because Twitch isn't great at announcing live streams, but Twitter, I'll be tweeting out when I live stream on Twitter. So make sure you follow that if you don't want to miss anything. But apart from that, guys, I hope to see you guys. T so tomorrow is when it starts. It starts in about, from when I'm recording this, like 10 hours. So I'll see you guys. Well, not, sorry, not 10 hours. What am I doing? 22 hours. So I'll see you guys, uh, I'll see you guys in the London Dare stream. Later, guys. Bye.